Welcome back, Marvel collectors, to our Rise of Vacor de Mexico series. I'm so glad you could join us in this very exciting upload. We are joined by the family responsible for the company, Alejandro and Jorge Vasquez Medina, as well as Alejandro's daughter, Mary Vasquez, and Marvel's historian, David Tamilevich, as we unearth the time capsule of what had nearly been buried and lost forever in the annals of marble making history. We bring to you the Eagle of Mexico City, Manufacturer's de Vidrio El Aguila S.A. Let's talk a little bit more about El Aguila. We have prepared some photos that I want you to see. So here we have the mosaicos, right? And I mean, I don't know if it was before your time or not, but do you know the approximate years of productions with some of these marbles? Jorge is telling me he, he was already uh, in the factory. I was, I, I was just in school. Yes, yeah. He was there, and he says, in the Laguila, they had three ovens producing marbles, and one oven producing colors. So, uh, since the very beginning, we started making color glass. Do you remember how many marble machines you had? Do you remember the numbers? Five machines. We had machinery for all sizes. You change rollers from the right. same machine and then you have a, another size. I mean, there's quite a bit of variation. Some are opaque glass, some of them have a clear base, and mm -hmm. some of them are transparent. So you were definitely experimenting at that point. But do you know the years, uh, approximate uh, years? Mosaico was born was 1960, 1961. Okay, 1960, 1961. Okay, Jorge is going to tell me a story. He says, <coughs> all our production was based on crossables for in order to decorate the marbles. The machine operators always are trying to do something new. One of them uh, decided not to use the crossable and to put big hunks of glass in the side of the, the stream. Yeah, he was experimenting. Yes, yes. experimenting. Uh, the, result was an exit production of mosaic sometimes that's crazy because it works out like that they're beautiful marbles and many of them have up to five colors they're absolutely gorgeous very collectible marbles today um, hard to find in the united states almost impossible to find in the united states but those folks who have them understand they're beautiful um, treasures yeah <laughs> yeah for, for mexico we always use coolant for Mexican production because we have tremendous quantities of bottles of pop, pop bottles. And many of them are very good colored to produce glass marble. For exporting to Europe, everything was about scratch. Uh, own formulas for even for crystal or formula for every color. And we have also a wonderful formula for white opaque glass. The, the two big marble books up here both say that, um, that the cat eye started in 1944 at Lacour. and But you said no, you said not till 1959, right? Well, the, could be 1952 or 93. Oh, okay. It was the first time that we used crossable. It was for making cut size. Then we we, we saw the, the benefits of the crossables and we started making our own designs. 
for the different soils and the, the zebra. And the, see, the crossables, uh, you have different perforations, different hollows. The yes, holes. Top of the, the holes. You can put nothing in one. You can put two colors in other. You can put one color in other. That is a product of a long go. And and more. We, for for much time, we were producing our own crucibles there in to, in the factory. We had a, a, an artist. A, a carpenter who was very good making models to to knows the, the making a crossable is something yeah. very very difficult. It's a specialist work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My brother Jorge designed it. I want this this shape of crossable. Uh -huh. Make me a model to mold this yeah, piece. Minion. And so the, 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 the molds were made in aluminum. And the crucible themselves, what was the material that you used for the crucible? It's a refractory concrete. Concrete. Yeah. High aluminum. High aluminum. Secret. <laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> is what we are saying. We manage the temperature of the screw. We manage the crucible and another thing <laughs> just with turning a knob <laughs> we control the speed of the rollers <laughs> electronically we were in, uh, thinking about making better marbles all the time better yeah, marbles production. and big production yeah. that was a goal all the time so you succeeded can, <laughs> we we just might get a get a, get a machine and invite you up to the United <laughs> States to help us <laughs> run it. <laughs> you, you, you can be our senior advisors. La Sempa Sucho. This is the only El Aguila nicknamed marble style given to me by Familia Vasquez Medina. And it translates to the marigold, which is a very recognizable native Mexican flower species traditionally grown for the Day of the Dead celebrations. And like many Al Aguila marbles, the yellow glass in these examples will glow a bright orange under UV light due to the cadmium oxide used in the glass ingredients. At some point, you made Chinese checker game marbles uh, oh, and, yes, and for, yes. for El Aguila. Es el único empaque que, segui que se seguimos haciéndolo en caja de cartón. It's the only packaging that we still can make in a carton box because you, you, you have these divisions of the different rows of the colors right and producing that is time taking because you can use one oven to produce one color i see you have to make two tones of yellow two tones of green two tones of blue it, it takes time the the opaque glass is expensive They're very expensive so did you um did you ever veneer glass i know the united states companies used to do that have like a white inside and put the color on the outside so the color didn't go all the way through the glass it was just veneered on the surface yeah, yes, we can do that. In order to make uh, cheaper the production, you can make in, in the center of the marble crystal, and you can make cheap oh. crystal out of color. Then you cover it with the color. Okay, 
So these were popular marbles locally as well. I mean, just really regional sales. But yeah, because the, the people who was outside the factory in a row waiting for get to get some amount of uh, mosaicos. One guy came with a new car. That's why I have the, the, the that date exactly in my mind. He it was a Chevy new a new Chevy sixty one out of the dealership. The seal the dealer. He took it. I give you my car. Give me some. Wow. Give me some mosaicos to sell. Man, I'm my. <laughs> I could imagine the scene, because in my head, I'm thinking, you know, the marbles were produced the night before. They're still hot. They're at the gate. Um, all the local vendors are coming up, and they want, they, they're, it's almost like a fish market, and they're scrambling to buy whatever they can get their hands on from you guys. It's what I do when I go to get bread. <laughs> I, stay, I stay in the... In the, in the bakery the bakery waiting for the bread i like to get it really ready <laughs> out of the oven so we can s discuss now the transition from the el aguila factory and the marbles made there to how and when you started vecor de mexico which was in another city can you explain how uh, and when that happened when we started exporting in, in El Aguila, the first uh, trips to Europe were to Spain. I see. But we we saw that uh, there was a big market if we could export to Europe. So the, then the idea came of get a bigger land and start producing more and export to Europe. So, Bacor was founded with that intention, and we decided to go to Guadalajara. We got enormous land, piece of land in an industrial area, and we started uh, building more ovens, uh, constructing more machinery. Do you uh, remember what year this was happening? Well, in the late 60s, and uh, Bacor started in, the, in 1970. 1970. Thank Mary here. My pleasure. Mary, thank Mary, you. Mary, thank you. Sure Mary, Mary helped put this. It was Mary that started this. When was it? In March, maybe. It was months, ag months ago. Tú, Mary, nos metiste en esto. Tú metiste en esto. Mary, Mary, who's... <laughs> Mary, who's we have your, to huh? go ahead, Steven. Uh, who's your favorite uncle? <laughs> Jorge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's a wrap. Always, forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah, he's my favorite uncle now too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. we're gonna sign yeah. off. I will talk to all you guys on the side later on. So, hey, terrific job by everyone. We will be uploading more of an identification style video sometime in the future. If you like this video, please give it a like. And thank you for watching Vintage Machine Made Marbles.